Welcome to this week's Tech Clinic, where we answer all of your questions about bike tech and kit. Now, if you're wondering where John is, don't worry. He's not died, he's actually at the Vuelta, looking for all the latest and hottest new tech out in Spain. But he should be back soon, and in the meantime, you've got me. So, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, and also click the little bell icon, as it'll give you a notification every time we upload a video, and that might even include an answer to one of your questions. So without further ado, let's dive in with a question from Gordon MacDonald. So Gordon writes, thanks John, presumably it means Ollie, um, loves the show, it's no miss viewing. Now his question is that he has a new Canyon Endure CF SLS Disc 8, great choice, and it's fitted with Shimano Ultegra 8000. Now he has just one problem, which is that the 16 tooth or 14 tooth uh, sprocket at the back is clicking with every wheel rotation even when he's pedaling. Now he's tried adjusting the barrel adjuster at the rear on the derailleur but it just throws the gears out and he's cleaned it and he's looked for any dirt in there or any other bits and there's nothing and the ticking just persists and he says it's beyond annoying. It is, I agree, whenever there's a clicking on my bike I find it really annoying. In this case, I would say what you wanna do is eliminate every single possible cause. Now, based on what you've said, the first thing that I would look at would be, if it was my bike, would be the possibility that your mech hanger is slightly bent. And you might think, well, I've been really careful with my bike, I've not knocked it, but in my experience, you know, I'm really careful with bikes as well, but I have bent the odd hanger and it can just be the slightest of knock that bends it. Now, it might not be a bent mech hanger, in which case I would also suggest you check that the derailleur is fully set up properly. So check the high and low limit screws and the B limit screw as well, and check that they're all in the correct positions. And if you're not sure how to do this, then we've got some really good videos on it. So we'll post a link in the description below and you can uh, check that out. Hope this helps. The next question is from Angelo Gallo, who has asked, would using a heat gun to remove tubular glue on carbon rims be okay? Secondly, he asks, I've heard that there are some tub glues that are easier to remove and manage than others. For example, I've read that Conti Black tub glue is easier to remove than other brands. As an aside, I'm replacing damaged Continental tires with a new one on the Zip 303. It's starting to regret going with tubs. Well, you've got some banging wheels there, so quite envious of those. Um, with your first question, the heat gun wouldn't recommend it at all. Um, I think as you suspect by asking the question in the first place, using a heat gun such as what you'd use on wallpaper, um, it, it could potentially seriously damage your rim. Um, the other thing to bear in mind is how the tub glue works. So the tub glue contains a solvent and when that cures and sets, the solvent evaporates and leaves the adhesive behind. Um, so melting it isn't really the best way. Unfortunately, removing tub glue is a pain and the, the simple way, well, the easiest way that I've found to do it and, and the rest of us is by using good old John Canning's patented elbow grease and also some solvents such as rubbing alcohol, petrol or white spirit, that sort of thing. Um, if you're worried about the solvent damaging your carbon rim, which is a sensible thing to be worried about, then perhaps just get a bit on a cloth and try it on a, a smaller area first and see how it responds. But generally speaking, um, most rims should be okay with, with white spirit, but maybe just check first. Next question is from Simon Morrissey, and he writes, Hi John. <sighs> Sorry, I'll forgive you Simon. I need to buy a new outer chain ring. I'm currently on a 5034, but would like to replace it with a 53 outer and keep the 34 inner. Is there any problem with doing this? Well, you might be able to bodge it, but I really wouldn't recommend it. Um, and that's because if you had a 5334 combo, the drop off between the big chain ring and the small chain ring is massive. It's like shifting your chain off the edge of a cliff and therefore you face a much greater chance of dropping your chain when you shift on the front rings um, which you don't want to happen. Also big 
Standard chain sets often have a different BCD spacing to a compact chain set. So the BCD is the bolt spacing diameter of where the chain ring bolts go on the chain set. Now, typically a standard chain set has a 130 or a 120 BCD and a compact chain set typically has a 110 BCD, meaning that the two aren't compatible. Now, this is actually one of the great things about the new Shimano Ultegra and Jura Ace because they actually have the same BCD throughout the entire range. So they have a universal uh, crank set. And so that means you can change the chain rings, be it 30, uh, 4, 50, you know, compact, or 53, 39, or 52, 36. All those different rings fit on the same crank set, which is really cool. So some good innovation on the new Shimano stuff. The next question is from Ambor Gislarsson. Now, I hope I've pronounced your name slightly correct. <laughs> Sorry about that. Your question is, can I upgrade a 68 millimeter BSA threaded square taper bottom bracket to a Holotech 2 on my 2010 Trek 1.5? Is this worth it? What are the benefits? Well, I would say yes. If your bottom bracket needs replacing and your bearings probably are quite worn if it's uh, an eight-year-old bike then a hollow tech would be a fine choice of bottom bracket to go with you'd simply take out your square taper bottom bracket uh, clean the bottom bracket area thoroughly and then just simply screw in the new hollow tech bottom bracket it's a great option because there's a lot of chain sets that are going to be compatible a lot of newer chain sets as well that are going to be compatible with that hollow tech so yeah Great, great option. The next question is from Vincent Bond, who asks, how come that if I corner fast, my discs rub against my brakes? Well, Vincent, this is something that I've actually experienced myself on a number of different bikes and wheel combinations. And there's a few things that, that can cause it. So if your brakes, calipers and discs and everything are set up absolutely perfectly and you're still getting some rub it can be caused by torsional flex in the fork now there's not really much you can do about that you're just too powerful for your bike uh, but the other thing could be just a slight misalignment in either the brake the rotor or the caliper or if there's a slight little bend in your rotor blade now this only has to be slight because the tolerances and the spacing in between the calipers and the rotors is really, really small on road bright disc brakes. So yeah, um, you might wanna check that everything, only a small amount of movement can cause the discs to rub. The next question is from Cam Held who asks, well, he says, last week while descending, the steel bolt on my seat clamp sheared in half and resulted in a high speed crash. Is this, is, is this something that is well known to happen and give out on bikes? While I'm not the smallest guy and my bike is four years old with regular use and maintenance, I would expect a bolt to last more than four years or expect to be told to replace it regularly as part of maintenance. Is this just a fluke accident or am I out of the loop and should I re be replacing my bolts more regularly? Well, I mean, sorry to hear about your accident and you know, really hope you're okay. Um, I mean, bolts really should be lasting sort of indefinitely, uh, certainly longer than four years. However, there are a few things that you should consider. The first thing is, did you torque it correctly? Now, a lot of people, um, you know, a lot of home mechanics, they'll seem like seat post bolts especially, they'll just tighten them with a regular Allen key or hex wrench, if you're watching in America. Um, and this is a common way to, to damage areas of your bike, such as your seat post or your seat post collar or your steerer tube and it can also overstress bolts as well. So that is a way that you can then cause them to fail. Um, the other thing that can affect the lifespan of a steel component like a bolt would be if you rode in salty or corrosive conditions such as you know wintry wet roads um, because they can become rusted and corroded over time. And the other thing is yes, flukes can happen, you know, quality control is in place in manufacturing things, but occasionally things, you know, dodgy components can go through the net, although this is something that is very, very rare. Compassion6 has asked, 
Is there a disadvantage to using a derailleur hanger extender? Any downsides? I prefer to spin versus grind, and I have a 5339 up front. Thanks. Not really, uh, a tiny, tiny little bit heavier, you know, adding a little bit more weight. You have a slightly heavier chain because it's probably gonna be a couple of links longer. Um, and there's a tiny little bit of aero drag if you're really paying attention because the derailleur is a bit longer, but no, not really. I prefer to run a 5339 as well. And I will routinely fit a 32 tooth cassette because I also prefer to spin. Um, and with the new 11 speed, cassettes that a lot of people have these days, the range is so great on them that an 11 to 32 is, is a great thing to ride. You don't feel like you, there's big steps in between the gears. So if you want a bigger range at the back, absolutely go for it. You might also want to consider a long cage rear derailleur, in which case you wouldn't have to fit the extender. Next up, we have uh, Simone Pernice. Now Simone asks, well he says, hi John, Great videos, thanks. Well, anyway, I'll forgive you. I have a problem with my Shimano hydraulic brakes. They work fine until I brake hard for some time, and then they begin rubbing for a while, then the rubbing disappears. I centered the discs between the pads to avoid the rubbing, and although there is very little clearance, the discs are almost true. The problem looks to be on both brakes. Thanks for your answer. Well. I think I know what the problem is here. So when you brake really hard, the fluid, the hydraulic fluid in your brakes heats up. Now, if there is air that's got into your brake lines, which can happen over time, then that air expands as the oil heats up. Now, what this causes is for the pads to come out and then just stick a little bit. And then when the air cools down, the pads can then retract because as air heats up, it expands. Now. The solution here is to bleed your brakes and remove those air bubbles. Uh, we have videos on this and there's some really good ones, so we'll post links to those in the description and you can check them out as this should help your problem. But yeah, I'd say the best thing to do is to bleed your brakes. The other thing to factor in is that you say that your discs are almost true. Now, bear in mind that any slight bending in your discs is gonna make any sort of rubbing issue worse as well, so that can compound it. And then the other one thing to point out is that if your discs are a little bit old, if you're, well, no, your discs, if your brake calipers are a little bit old, then sometimes the pistons can start to stick slightly. So I don't think it will be that. I think it will be air bubbles in your brake lines, but yeah, should be something that you can fix quite easily. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this tech clinic useful. As ever, if you have any questions about tech, kit, upgrades, maintenance, or any problems at all, then let us know in the comments section below and we'll potentially answer it in a future tech clinic video. So the one question I'm sure you're all wanting to know the answer to though is where can I get one of these awesome Spanish themed t-shirts? Well, it's easy, you just head over to the GCN shop, but they're only available for a limited time only, so you wanna head over there sharpish. Right, I'm going now. See ya, bye.